Hey there, I'm Jen Ferguson with Artistic Painting Studio, and today I'm going to show you guys a technique on how to seam your foils together. We all get those projects that are wider than 12 inches, and this is definitely going to help you. Okay, so today is going to be about seaming your foils and I'm going to go over a couple different types of foil. I have one here that just has a very um, subtle pattern. It has multiple colors and it's modeled. Um, so that might be a little bit different. I'm going to also do a solid color, which is how you would seam most of your foils. And then one with a very distinct pattern as in our Waverly foil on how to match that up. So I'm first going to talk about Waverly, okay, because I want to have this where you can see what I'm doing. First, I had to cut the foil into a couple of sections so that I could make sure that I had the repeat, okay? So I know I've got the same flower here, and if we were going to be doing this on a project where we had to do it wider, okay, than just the 12 inches, the repeat is actually smaller, okay? The width of the repeat is smaller than the 12 inches because we've got the design uh, repeating right here. So you would actually be overlapping the foil a little bit, okay? So this right here is about uh, the repeat, okay? So right about there. So just kind of understand where it's repeating so that you're going to know where to match it up um, and that way you have a clue of what you're doing before you get to your project okay so now we're going to get out a sample board so i can show you how that i do this here is my black board which you guys know that this is what i usually like to work on is a black base and um, we're just going to do a couple of different things okay so First of all, when you are seaming a foil, and I'm just gonna go from like side to side, I try to not let this edge fall in if I'm doing a solid color transfer. Okay, and the reason being is that's gonna make a very, very distinctive line. So I wanna to try to stay away from that if possible. So I'm gonna scrub up to it, but I'm not gonna scrub that edge and hopefully I'm gonna get something that's a little bit more, not perfect, but that did lay into the foil pretty well. So it almost ended up to being uh, a nice straight edge, okay? A way that you can prevent that is to crinkle your foil first, okay? Which then is going to allow, okay, I'm gonna cut a smaller piece. I should have gone the different direction here. I'm gonna end up covering this board really quick. Okay, so once you crinkle it up, it's just going to allow you to not let the foil normally fall down as well. You can see that being crinkled, it's staying up a little bit on that edge automatically. Okay, but when you do go in to seam, you're gonna overlap, okay? You wanna overlap that seam area, and I try to go about a half an inch so that I know I can seam that area in together well. And you can even see how this side here, with that little bit of crinkle, it's keeping that edge up so I don't have to worry about it falling straight down. And then peek underneath, make sure that you're getting the two areas to come together. And hopefully you'll be able to avoid any super, super distinctive line as they meet, okay? And I'm not gonna finish that up too much, but that's just basically how you seam. The messier you can leave the edge like here, normally the better they'll come together because they're just kind of interlocking instead of having a, any kind of a straight line. Uh, but that one actually blend it super well, okay? So let's keep doing this. And I'm going to go ahead and crinkle this one as well. Now, if you're working with any of our super easy release foils, you don't want to crinkle them first, okay? They um, they can actually fall off the backing. So make sure that when you're looking for your foils 
and you're figuring out how you're going to seam if you've got a bigger project, make sure if it says super easy that you don't try to crinkle it first. Okay, so here, crinkling it allowed me to keep that more rough edge. Okay, still going to put it back down and scrub again, but I'm staying away from that edge. So I've got that nice, more indistinctive area, okay, that I'm gonna blend into. Again, let me cut a little piece here. Again, keep it wrinkled, just so it's gonna be easier. Overlap, see if I can see I'm overlapping probably about a half an inch. And then if you're worried about the blend, okay, or the scrubbing of the seams together. Sometimes it's not a bad idea just to use your soft cloth. Oh, that's nice and laying down there good. Let's get our little tool. Okay, I always have these pick tools handy because these are from um, Harbor Freight. They're called dental picks and they're great because you can get under your foils easily. But if you're worried about scratching or anything happening to that transition line, the first thing that you can do is just rub really good with a nice soft cloth, okay? You also don't want to rub over onto the foil that's been transferred because you can scratch that. So you want to be careful in this transition. And then you can definitely work back from there. So now I can get my scrubber brush after I just dropped it, okay? And finish scrubbing out that area. So there, we got a nice transition, okay? Now this is a foil that has multicolored to it, and it really didn't matter that I tried to either line the pattern up or not, but if you were worried about that, again, it would be more of trying to figure out where the possible repeat is of the design, and then making sure that you're seaming close to that area. Okay, so our trickiest part, is gonna be a foil that has a very distinctive pattern to it, okay? Okay, so I can see where that is. Okay, again, I am gonna do a crinkle on this one. I'm gonna put it this direction. This is my cut edge where I'm gonna to want to blend in, okay? We're gonna go ahead and scrub up to that. Transfer as much as we can, okay, it looks like my edge really got down there still pretty deep, okay? I'm not worrying about trying to transfer the foils as perfect, okay? But now I can try to figure out where the repeat is. And I'm telling you, sometimes it just takes a minute to really look at the foil really well and figure out where your repeat is going to be. Okay, and I found that part of the design. So I'm going to cut it where it's overlapping. I'm gonna crinkle it again, okay? Just because if you crinkled one piece, you wanna crinkle all of them. Okay, so my design is gonna overlap. So I wanna make sure that if I'm doing this, I'm cutting it to where I do have that overlap and it might go further into the design than you anticipate it. So I got an overlap of probably close to an, uh, an inch in some spots, but that should give us a really good matchup to keep going forward. So also, if you're doing something, you've got a project where it's the top of a table or something and you know you got to go 20 inches wide, you know, your foil is gonna be 12 inches wide. Make sure that you've bought plenty of it so that you can match that up because it might, it might take more sections or more foil, okay, to actually match the pattern up and keep going. Uh, but that right there matched up gorgeous so that we could just keep going across this project. So I hope that these little helpful tips will make it easier on your next project if you have to seam. The other thing is <clears throat> some of our foils do come in 24 inch wide. So definitely check at the options of those foils before you get going on a really big project. It might be easier to start with a 24 inch width foil versus a 12 inch width foil.
I'm always here to answer your questions and help you guys get the best look possible with your foil transfers. So let's hope that this has helped. Hey guys, thank you so much for joining me today on this video regarding seaming your foils. If you have any questions, comments, or need help, please feel free to reach out. Also do us a big, big favor and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of our upcoming tutorials.